Welcome to the House of L. The House of L Ministries. I'm also putting ministries. Should we call ourselves ministries or House of L Church or House of just House of L? House of L Church Ministries. No, because we are the church. House of L Ministries. I think that the church has tainted the ministries word church. So I'm afraid to use the word church. I'll just leave the word church to God. House of the House of God does mean church. House of God means That's House what of God. Is, house of God. Well, uh, House of House of L. So we are asking y'all, you know, just for some feedback. Of course, God has the final say, but I'm just curious what we should call our family ministry. Welcome, everyone. If you're new here, I'm Nubian, and I'm Jordan. And I'm Lion. And this is my husband. On the website. And all of us are here as a family, and we want to actually just chime in. Well, actually, I want to chime in, and I just, you know, ouch, suckered them into it. No, he didn't pinch me. My husband's doing my nails. I love it. But I wanted to, like, chime in and, um, shoot. Let's just talk about some tips, y'all, like what we can do to help you prepare for what's getting ready to happen next. Like any type of advice maybe that I can try to give y'all. Thanks, babe. I feel like um, there should be someone in the home that's assigned to the food. Someone that is assigned to watch the food and to monitor the food as well as um ration the food i feel that there's always going to be at least one person in the house that either tries to overeat or you gotta have to make sure that they either fast or you know deal with those energies because if they don't those energies of um greed is one of the sins of the bible and it's it's also it can cause a lot of confusion and unnecessary roughness let's put it like that in the home, especially in a survival situation. I also feel like you guys should assign someone who's in charge of like weaponry or like security, you know, like how are you going to either police your land or your home? Um, also, if you live in an apartment building, you should have an escape route. And one of the things that I know I noticed is that a lot of people live on the second floor and a lot of people have parents that live on the second floor who are handicapped or in wheelchairs but you guys have to remember that the elevators are not going to work especially when the power goes out so remember um if you guys have been you know rolling with me for a while i used to talk about how home depot has these fireproof ladders that you can use to try to get your family or your parents out of the window but if they're heavy set or overweight then you may have to find a way that you can use the stairs and use a board to slide them up and down the stairs but it's going to take a village so just like in ukraine there are people who are having to run and help people someone's having to hold them behind the shoulders and someone's having to hold their feet and you know someone else's two sides is having to hold their leg but the sad part about the society that we live in is most people don't have family like that that's going to hold them. They'll have family that's going to run over them and, you know, step on their face and try to escape. At least in my case. Huh? Well, I mean, in the case of, you know, people who I thought were family. Let's put it like that. But now God has put me with my real family. And remember, your real family are those who do the works of God Almighty. All right. So um, do you guys have any tips? Do you have any tips for... um? <laughs> Tips for um, doomsday prepping. Make sure you Not even just Bible. doomsday prepping. Yeah. What is that, hubby? Make sure you, you keep a Bible and you uh, have a, a good group and a team around you and, and so you can study and keep yourself self-improved. Self-improved, like the Bible says, right? Yeah, self-improved. Study to show yourself approved. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Don't be afraid to overthink. Yeah, we're gonna we're all gonna be forced to overthink. <laughs> Big time. Overthinking can save your life. 
Do you have any tips for children who are about to witness probably one of the greatest catastrophes that America has ever witnessed in our lifetime? Do you have any tips for children who are probably afraid or just anything? Like maybe tell them to pitch in to help <laughs> something. What is it like to eat for, eat for you as a child, the work that you have to help with and you know, moving from the city to now doing more like farm life work. Because that's what it's pretty much going to come to. You know, everyone's going to go have to go to basically some type of off-grid living at some point. Yeah. Um. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. You're good. Um, I feel like if you have like a favorite song or something, always try to say happy. Don't get on the negative side, because I feel like if you do get on the negative side and, like, look on the internet and see the whole world is, like, falling or dying, just try to listen to your favorite songs or listen to your favorite music and try to think of the past and the times that you had fun with your family. And it may get emotional sometimes, but if you get through it, you're, like, still young, so you'll definitely make it through it. You just have to always depend on God. Yeah, you have to depend on God, guys. That's very excellent advice, Darcy. Thank you very much. Because in this hour, I feel like a lot of people are going to be um, cursing God and upset with what they're seeing and what's happening in our land and why we're having to go through this, this major shift. But I also feel that this is the hour of the watchers also. This is the hour where you will see God's true people stand up. And we will be on those street corners. We will be out there. We will be out and about on the highways and the byways. We will be helping God's people because we truly were the rescue mission. And there is no one else coming other than the angels that are surrounding us, protecting us. But we truly are the divine warners. And the divine warners are not ashamed. We are aware of what it is that we're all facing and i feel like my husband touched on a very great point with you know not only getting your bibles but you may have to put bible scriptures on you like you may have to write them on your shoes because they're going to start going house to house to take all the bibles out they're going to take the bibles out of the out of the stores out of the churches um god's people will be turned in God's people will have to flee into um, wilderness and off-grid situations. And those who are caught, um, many will be tormented. And uh, the tribulation, we're going to have to go through that. Um, Yeshua was without sin. He was blameless. He was spotless. And look what he had to go through. So we're not going to be able to just fly up out of here and escape this. I feel like very strongly there's a knowing that we're all going to be tested. And these demons, because that's exactly what they are. Um, first and foremost, watch the Catholic Church. As soon as the Catholic Church say peace and safety, they're the ones that's going to pop it off. They're the ones that's going to not only pop off everything going into chaos but when you hear the catholic church mention that then you know it's go time because we don't know when that go time is just have a plan have a plan with your family um be prepared like make sure that you have like can openers if you have cans because it sucks y'all trying to open up a can with no can opener <laughs> right guys <Ooh. laughs> I've seen all kind of theories on the internet that never work. Like, Troom Troom uses spoon. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> a knife, all kinds of things. You're going to need a really sharp knife. Take some water too, babe. You're going to need a, yeah. You're going to need a really sharp knife. Yeah, you guys will. You'll definitely need, you'll need a lot of knives because you'll need knives for almost everything. Um, you can make, you know, there, you can like go, there was a website I used to go to as well. It's called Monkey C. And Monkey See It teaches you, or YouTube, learn how to make makeshift, you know, tiny homes or something. Or something if you have to live out in the wilderness or something. But trust me when I say that you 
will need knives and you'll probably need to know how to use alter alter alternatives um water like there's a life straw for your water but did you get a life straw and if you don't have a life straw you can you can use regular choco and put it over a strain and then pour water on top of that and that actually will strain your water also pool shock works as well oh here's the thing i don't, I don't know if it works or not but you can i really don't know if it works or not but you can either take like water from the river there's two ways i learned how to do it you can take water from the river put a sock over it yeah um drain it into another bottle then boil it or you could um put sand and rocks in there it may be sandy but yeah you put sand in there and then rocks on top and then you use the water to pour it in there and then you um boil it and then that can fil filter your water yeah if you don't have a life straw that's really good great great advice thank you um We've run into um, training ourselves to go from living in, you know, our beautiful Sky Riser where we have instant power and instant Wi-Fi and instant everything there at a snap of a finger. We had the fastest Wi-Fi, the, all the lights we needed. <laughs> Matter of fact, we had a hue lighting system. We were so spoiled with electricity and lights. But then when we moved, you know, to be in our off-grid um, home, then, y'all, that's when everything kicked in. Like, we try to use push lights and the batteries for push lights, but your batteries, they get drained. They don't last. The batteries don't last. Um, you can use marine boats like the Amish do. And the marine boats, if you get more than one, you can attach them to each other. And if you have a solar panel, then you can attach the solar panel to it. And then you have unlimited lights unlimited power and free power on top of that and um i think that's one of the things that y'all will probably be challenged with because um y'all gonna trip when you no longer have your cell phone and say that you don't have a so if you don't have a solar power charger for your cell phone so you can check and see what's happening in the world or have some type of ham radio you know, or some type of trucker's radio to see what's going on in the world, then it's going to frustrate you because there's going to be no power. What is the what is the most challenging thing that you guys have noticed about, you know, when we have our days where, because there's days where we have really good power and there's days where we get frustrated with our battery, then we have to charge it, or the sun has to charge our, our solar panels and the light may come on, it may not come on. But it actually comes on more than not. Um, what did you guys notice, like, difference-wise between sit living in the city versus being off-grid and having to adapt to the off-grid life and seeing that this is how our ancestors lived and knowing that this is exactly what we're all being thrust back into? It's normalized for us now, but I think it was very, it was hard for us. Like, we went through, you, you go through, like, an emotional detox <laughs> as well lots of mental breakdowns yeah lots of mental breakdowns um and then you have to calm people down in your home because everyone goes through different phases of no power no electricity not being in the city life you know what was yours hubby <clears throat> leaving the city life and you know um uh, out here but at the same time it was um uh, yeah, uh, a meltdown. Um, uh, what they call that? With uh, spirit spiritually, like you know, a yeah. meltdown. Like uh, you know, because I was so used to the city life and having you know things at the reach of a hand. You know, you could flick a light. You can you know do certain things, and and it was all there. And also, um, you know, um, it's spiritual too because it's a big meltdown. You 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 don't have that city life around you you know, around the clock like you used to. And it, and, um, but it's also a, a blessing too, cause it also to get you closer to the creator and also, you know, uh, detox a lot of the stuff when you were in that world and in that city and stuff like that too. 
because a lot of us don't know that we have a lot of uh like a trail mix on us you know what i mean like we're like nuts and we're you know uh gr grains and we're over over cranberries and stuff like that but when we come out here it's like you know detoxifying all of that stuff that was in the city on us you know our mentality our our aura or our persona or energy or you know our whole nine you know yeah. just and, and and it's just like man yeah you, you use it for a bathroom yeah to an outhouse yeah. we have an outhouse yeah <laughs> um, and then um <laughs> from taking a shower and just just running the water too on top of that we we just run the water while we find our clothes before we got in the shower and now we recognize how precious water is and you know we regret that wasting water um god has blessed us we're very fortunate to be able to have water coming out of a rock you know to where we can go down and you know we go to a stream and you know shower up or brush our teeth um that's on our property but i feel like we're lucky to have that stream there is times that we didn't have the stream so we would have to go down to the lake and we would have to gather water and water jugs and then we'd have to bring them back to the property to boil the water mm. or we'd have to stop at the local church you can stop at your local church as well mm -hmm. if they don't cap off the water hoses but there's always a water faucet outside of the church and you can fill up your water jugs from there as well um i would fill up my water jugs and leave like a dollar or two dollars when i did that um and then also, you know, sharpening up on your skills, especially more of the silent weapons like the bows and arrows. But at the same time, sharpening up on your spiritual skills like your prayers, because you have to know that you're the bows and arrow. You have to know that you're the own gun. You have to know the weaponry within you. You have to know the power that's within you. When you know the power that's within you, it could be like a big old demon outside and they could, there could be like 15 guns in the house. And because you know the power within you, you'll run outside to go face that demon on your own with your bare hands before you even thought about picking up any of those guns. And then you'd be like, oh, okay. Yes. Yes, beloved. Um, about the story about moving from the... What, you get, they can't hear you. About the story about moving from the city to the mountains. I have a really funny story. Um, I remember on one of my birthdays, I forgot which birthday it was. I had so many birthdays. Um, but it, I think it was my 10th or 9th birthday, most likely 9th. Uh, I was really famous in the building for the girl with the fairy. Everybody knew me, right? So I I always went downstairs and went to the package room, made friends with all the people in the package room. And then one day, it was the day after my birthday, um, we started receiving all kinds of packages. And the guy at the front desk asked, why you got so many packages? I've seen you come downstairs like at, at least 10 times. And I was like... It was my birthday, and he just like, oh, okay. And then he got <laughs> back to work. And then um, I remember we always buy extra stuff, extra toys for our ferrets, always buy extra stuff for our pets. I remember when we had all kinds of electricity things. I remember every time I'd get motivation and, like, go all out and do the kitchen and stuff. You remember that one time I did the kitchen? And then I remember being spoiled, like, every time I'd go and clean the house because I got motivated. I'd go and get spoiled and buy whatever I want from the grocery store without even checking the price because we never checked the price. And now going from not, <laughs> excuse me, not checking the price to checking the price, that's, that's a huge culture shock. Yeah, I think um, everyone's having to experience that with, you know, COVID and the shift. I feel right about now everyone's had a major life shift. I feel that whoever you're with right now, who's in your household, who's around you right now, you know if that's going to be your crew for this incoming shift that we have. I just watched a video. Actually, my family and I, we just watched a video. And this happened about three hours ago. Two. Yeah. Two. Well, it was two hours at the time, but about three hours ago. Half. So about three hours ago that um this guy just filmed these this video of and he's in Colorado and he just turned his camera towards out the window and there's nothing but straight military tanks lined up all you know outside of Colorado and I know Tennessee's been having um drills Kentucky's been having drills Mexico's been having drills um, Illinois was having drills while we were there because we would look outside of our window and look downstairs and see the military tanks.
police in downtown. So it's interesting that this is happening once again, right during Passover time. And I do feel very strongly that this is a time where God is causing all of us to just sit still right now, be still, listen for his voice, listen for his instructions and do what you can, you know, as a family right now to gain understanding, you know, gain understanding. Okay. How are we going to map this out? Because it's going to get scary and we have to have an understanding, not just as a family, but who we are individually, because we are going to be asked, you know, are you going to, you know, sell out for Christ? Are you going to, you know, or are you going to get that mark on the back of the forehead? Um, I heard a few stories about when you get that mark on the back of your hand and they'll be using a, a lot of barbers too. They'll be, they'll, they're going to start initiating barbers contracts to, um, put chips in the back of people's heads while they're giving them um, head barbershop, like, like haircuts. But when you get that mark on the back of your head, a hand or the back of your forehead, the second you get the mark, it's going to immediately show 666. Like it's going to, you're going to see it in the spiritual and the physical. Immediately you'll see 666 on the front of your head. So there will be no question as to who got the mark of the beast because you'll literally see it written on their head. And the people that's going to deny getting the mark of the beast, these are the ones that will be captured. These are the ones that they're ordering all those guillotines for. These are the ones that they were filling up the Social Security Department with all the different, you know, bullets and guns and things of that nature. I feel like none of this is to scare, of course, at this point. It's also to prepare you. Um, but I also feel that a lot of people are trying to ride the gate as much as they can they're trying to see how much sin they can get away with right now and trying to see you know like they'll be for example especially if you're in the church or you claim that you love god it's like you'll claim that you love god and then at night you'll go on a date and sleep with that guy but while you're sleeping with the guy you'll be looking out the window to look up in the clouds to see if god's going to come in the clouds and see if you just got a split second to repent or something no that means you're going to get left and right now, I feel that it's not the time to play at all, you know, with your salvation, with your walk, with your relationship with God. I feel like everyone has to individually talk to God about their salvation. Talk to God about what your move is going to be with you and your family. And, um... Just how everything's going to go down for you right now. Yeah, the neighbors love our property, don't they? They do. It's nothing. They're just straight demons. It's demon, demon spray. But it, like we said, it's Passover. I feel that there's a strong part of all of us right now that really don't want to talk about none of this. But at the same time, like I share with my family, I think it's important that we do have open discussions about it. So therefore, when it does happen that everyone's not in this big shock, that it's happening. So we just wanted to share that with y'all. Um, I don't know. I don't know when this is going to happen. I just know that my video is very symbolic as well. There was a big sign that said, get in place. Hopefully everyone's in place. As a matter of fact, I strongly do feel that God's people are in place. The sad part about it is there's a lot of people in the world that have no clue. They are not even in place or are prepared to be in place, but... um. Try to get as much water as y'all can to inside of your house. Even if you take that water and put it under your bed. Um, water, lights, oh, toiletry. So you're going to need a bucket. Probably a bucket inside of your house because the plumbing's not going to work if the power's not working. So get a bucket from like the Lowe's or Home Depot. And if you go to <laughs> it, um, Lowe's or Walmart, they there's have a, a whole entire toilet seat cover for the bucket so it's not unnatural yeah it's definitely common yeah that's you can go to walmart to get that 
toilet seat cover. Mm -hmm. And I think we paid, I don't I well, we got ours like a year ago before all this started going crazy. So maybe like, it was like $5.50 or something for it. So it shouldn't be that much more now. Also, you can get propane. Um, there's handheld propane that you can use for like Mr. Buddy heaters. Because during the times that are coming in, if the power is out, y'all, you have to be mindful that, think about what happened in Texas. People, their power was out. And they started offering people um, shelter and a warmer environment and a hot meal if they would just come down to the shelter. But do what? Get that chip. Get that, you know, S-H-O-T. And if you have electricity, sorry to cut you off. Well, you're good. <laughs> if you have electricity, Albert Einstein in 1905, he discovered that you can convert electricity to other minerals like liquid. Um, what is it? Liquid rock. All these other type of liquid rock and um, gas. Was it liquid rock and gas? You can convert energy into minerals. So you can get creative with things that you may not be able to go to the store and get. But just like Albert Einstein said in 1905, you can always be creative and create things into things. Because you can always convert things and trade things from energy to liquid, gas, and uh, solid. Yeah, and I, I, I think it's important also as she brings us up, that you do as much as you can um, right now, like um, maybe go into the back of your yard. You'll be surprised if there's some weird plants or even in your neighborhood and download an app called Picture This and um, just hold it up to that plant and it will tell you what type of plant that it is, that that is. There's a lot of plants around us that are already food and it's already medicine, but we don't know it because we're so used to going to the store to buy food and medicine and it's right there in your front yard it's right there in your backyard. It's right there all around you. And I know it for a fact because even when we lived in the city, they would literally plant fruits and vegetables inside of the trees, inside of the gardens. And people were passing by them. And it's like a full-fledged cabbage there or some peppers. And we're like, this is food. Like, But I was going to do a video about it, but I never did a video about it because I'm like, if I'm down here and I need this food, I don't want to like do a video and show everybody where my food is at. So. Just like in downtown, they had these giant plants on the street corner. Yeah, that's what I'm talking and about. You, Remember I was pointing those out? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, this is food. It's like a full purple cabbage, a full yellow cabbage. Remember the yellow and the red peppers? People eat vegetables. they just like me. Right. You will, and that's another thing, too. Like, when we would have to go, like, when we lived in Chicago years ago, um, we would... Um, go to food banks to get food and we've always been on vegan or vegetarian type of diet so we would notice that the places the shelters that gave away the food of the beans and rice there was there was literally no lines but the shelters that gave away the meat the lines was like literally like two three blocks long down the street so people literally have no conscious as far as what real food is and they feel that that meat is real food and it's not, it's fresh fruits and vegetables. And this is what I'd be even deeper as well because this is how you can see the zombie apocalypse coming in as well. And I know that's even biblical as well. There's been a few channels that I've been talking about the zombie ap apocalypse is very biblical, but you can literally see not only the apocalypse coming in, but you can tell who's going to be, you know, probably one of the OG zombies in that and that's basically like if you go out with someone right now and they love eating meat one that's a sign or they love eating raw meat if they love eating raw meat oh they finna eat you they finna eat your dog they finna eat they finna eat they finna yeah you gotta watch yourself and you'll also notice that people who have no control over their diet like if they eat a lot of meat or dairy or eggs or cheese they will basically start eating your supplies and overeating your supplies so no matter what you prep you'll still have to preserve that and watch that and monitor that and we're in times where you should be monitoring that anyways and i know a lot of you out there started gardens as well but you also have to think about um what if the water is not running and water is run that pump in the cities is ran off of electricity. So what happens when the gas stops? Because it's run off of electricity. What happens when the water pump stops? That that's run off of electricity. Um, exactly. Like you said, uh, that's run off of electricity. 
And if you do grow a garden, and say if like um, you have a friend or somebody that just always eats meat, humans are omnivores. They can both eat meat and uh, not raw meat. They can both eat meat and um, a garden things like vegetables, vegetables fruits. But carnivores, those aren't human. Carnivores are uh, animals like dogs, cats, etc., etc., like lions, uh, mountain cats. Or humans, humans like who eat other humans exactly. as a carnivore. A so carnivore, so that's yes. interesting that you brought that up because that's the times that we're in right now. So I just saw a flash or something that said America has like 40 days worth of food before they start going crazy. I don't even think they have that much. But what you're about to witness is a whole nother level of humans like these people are not even humans people are going to literally not only be eating each other but it's written even in the bible that they will be turning in their children for barley and rice people will be turning in their children and selling their children on the streets literally just for one night's worth of meal and i feel very strongly that if you're out there and you're worried about any of this happening to you, you shouldn't be. It's, you shouldn't. You should be if you did not get your relationship right with God Almighty. But if you did, then I posted a video yesterday where God showed us a rainbow in the cloud. Showed my husband a rainbow in the cloud. And then my husband shared a verse with me from, from that same rainbow in the cloud that said that anytime you see the rainbow in the cloud, that was God promising his people... A reminder of his covenant between with us and with the animals God established a new covenant so God's new covenant is here for his people to protect us if there's something that you need something that you don't know something that you need more wisdom on pray about it ask God about it and God will lead you directly to it because he's answering prayers quickly immediately and like never before all right so I think that's what I'm gonna add for now um, and, um, I guess that's it, guys. Have a good night. Stay safe. Stay safe, guys. And Gypsy says hi. Yeah. And husband says bye. 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 What is that? Bye.